what if the universe were so simple that if you knew how simple it was, it would be incomprehensible to you because it was so simple? It is that way. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. Irreducibly, more so, and more so to the fact, is that there's only one field and three field modalities. The thing that we actually call gravity is just nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. Phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. Electricity is hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. Like an electromagnet? The way an electromagnet works is it dumps its dielectricity and terminates into magnetism. It creates an enormous powerful magnetic field by losing its dielectric component. Yeah. It's kind of like if you take a big snow cone and uh, you terminate its coldness, all you're left with is water. Same thing. It's that simple. At the, any of, at the center of any field modality, there is never, there is none, there is zero of that field modality. Do you know how important that is? If you take the strongest magnet in the world, and of course I have to find a magnet, the only thing that defines a magnet is field coherency. You actually create like a neodymium iron boron, a samarium cobalt, or a ferrite magnets, yada yada yada. The only thing you do is you throw everything into geomagnetic precession, where it's all working together except against each other. You know what incoherency means? We're not talking about factors of additives. 1 and 1 equals 2. We're talking about multiplicatives. Of course, we can't say 1 and 1, because 1 and 1 times 1 times 1 is the same thing as 1 plus 1. And 2 plus 2 versus 2 times 2. Multiplicative. So now you have to not only understand what field, commensurability, field incommensurability is, you have to understand what field coherency implies. But what does that mean? What are we getting to? Let's, 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 I'm always trying to think of a thousand ways to simplify things. Here we have our conventional clock. Has anybody ever thought about a conventional clock? The ancient Greeks and the Pythagoreans and the Egyptians always understood things very simply. Point, line, circle, sphere. And number five would be ontos, which is Greek for being. In other words, a composite being, you know, like a being, like, hello, critter, man, human, child, right? So, point, line, circle, sphere, and ontos. Or as I coined, this is my creation in my book, I can't remember which book I put it in, monad, mind, magnitude, matter, and man. To keep them all M, I just left the fifth one, man, meaning being. Monad, mind, not mind in the conventional sense. Talk about noose here, okay? The demiurge. Not mind in the convention. Monad, mind, magnitude, matter, man. You see all the hands on the clock? Now, if I were to rip all these hands off on the clock, what would we have? What gives definition to magnitude and time is extension. Extension or magnitude. You see, space is not a thing. It's a posterior attribute of the loss of inertia. Now, the person who most intelligently actually stated what magnetism was was a person from quite a long while ago. That was Faraday. Faraday called magnetism the dielectric field. Now, if you take the center of a magnet, there is no magnetism. None. That's the plane of inertia. So, you think the center of something would be that the heart of something is, right? In conventional sense of how human beings interact with the world, the highest concentration of something is at the center of that something, isn't it? Because if you go outwards, you have dilution. If you go inwards, you have concentration. Can you think about that shit for two seconds? Stick your brain in drive mode instead of neutral or backwards, like some pot-smoking douchebag out there. Stick it in drive mode for a second. Conventionally, we understand things as the further out you go, the more dilution you have. But the dilution of what? The dilution of inertia, the dilution of potential. Well, we have greater expressions of force the further out we go. Yeah. In the case of a field, all fields which are magnitudinal, have magnitude, are so by nature of the loss of inertia as implied force in motion, be it electricity. See, now gravity, or what we call gravity, which does not exist as an autonomous field modality, it's nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration, 
is of course not a force. It's increasing inertia and acceleration. There's no force involved in the, what, the phenomena that we call gravity, which does not exist. So if I take the hands off the goddamn clock, which are the only things that express space and time, because here we have space and here we have time, right? If I take all the damn hands off the clock, what am I left with? It's the exact same clock. The only thing I've done is remove the expressions. A holographic universe. I, all I've done is I've removed the expressions that give definition to space and time. Point, line, circle, sphere. Monad, mind, magnitude. Monad, mind, magnitude, matter, and man. By the way, the number that is missing in the Fibonacci sequence, 1, 1, monad, mind, are one thing. Magnitude and matter are another thing. And ontos is a third thing. That would be the earliest form of the Trinity, by the way. That's where the Trinity actually came from. Monad, mind, the Aoristos Dias in the ancient Greek. Magnitude and matter, matter or hyle. Do you know what's missing? 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. 1, 1, 2, 3, you know what's missing? Four. Four is always an expression for matter. It doesn't exist. Four does not exist in the Fibonacci sequence. The ancient Greeks, Pythagoreans, and Egyptians knew that. One, one, two, three, five. Where's four at? Four is unreal. Matter. The only thing that gives definition to matter in the universe is magnitude. That magnitude is just a posterior attribute of the loss of inertia as defined by magnetism. At the center of time, there is no time. Time has no center. Time is unreal. Time is a creation of uh, humanity in its desire to codify everything, to calculate, to parse everything. Time doesn't exist. Here at the center, there is no time, is there? No, I removed the fucking hands from the clock. You're never going to read the time. Point, line, circle, sphere. Repeat after me. Okay? You understand the nature of the universe? Point? Point is still wrong because a point has a Cartesian coordinate. Even the word point is wrong. We're technically talking about counter space. Just to call it point is a convention. Point, line. Okay. The release of energy. I'm pretty sure the energy driving this shit is a little battery in the back. That is what we would call inertia, pure potential, right? The release of that potential which is the equation tattooed on my freaking wrist, by the way. My discovery. Mine. Not yours. Mine. As discovered in Plato's Republic 509D. So technically rediscovered, right? It's actually in the divided line segment explaining how I found it there. It would take a long time. The release of that inertia, that pure potential. See, isn't this a simple analogy? Everybody understands how a freaking clock works? The release of that potential. Here we have this. Force and motion. Force, motion, line, circle. Stick that in 3D, geromagnetic precession. We have, ha, 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 we have the sphere. Technically, we have the toroid. A magnet doesn't have any poles. It just has the inverse of counter space, which is the creation of space. Magnitude, point. See, Mother Nature's line is not like a, a line on a clock because point, line. Mother Nature's line, if Mother Nature's clock looks like this. It'd have two hands going this way and they'd be process or processing, we call this the Lamore frequency, geomagnetic precession, in three dimensions. Do you understand that unlike the conventional world where... The further out you go, the less concentration you have, right? You stick a drop of, of a dye in a pool, you know? You'll notice there'll be a dark dot at the center where it hit, and then it'll dilute, right? So at the center is the highest concentration. Well, fields are just the opposite. At the center, the inverse of any field, you see this field? It has magnitude and volume. At the center of that field, there is no of that field. If we have X field here, at the center of X, we have no X. The absence of X. I have a hurricane. Yeah. Belly button. 
Eyes, ears, nose, mouth, you know. The place from which everything enters and leaves, there is nothing. But not nothing, but rather no thing. You see, the common stupid dumbass human conventionally confuses nothing, nihilist, nihil ex nihilo. Do you know what that Latin means? Nihil ex nihilo? From nothing comes nothing. Nothing begets nothing. It confuses nothing with no thing. No thing is something totally different than nothing. What's the difference? Nothing is a reification of absence. You cannot reify an absence. A shadow is not an entity. A shadow is a privation of light, goddammit. So, nothing, no phenomena. It is not phenomenal. Now I mean it was ontological, right? Yeah, what's that word mean? Look it up! Google it! At the center of time, there is no time. At the center of a magnet... This is a hardcore fact, not my opinion. There's no magnet, magnetic flux registrable. That would be called the plane of inertia. You see, we have the inverse. In nature's entities, concentration exists this way, not this way. Yeah, you see me? Yeah, concentration. Oh, but it kind of does. Concentration exists this way when we're talking about counter space, increasing inertia, acceleration. Increasing potential. This is decreasing potential, but increasing force and motion. You see, human beings have their shit upside down and backwards. We think like an explosion is potential. No, it's actually impotency. You see, the things that we think that are important are actually impotent. No sexual innuendos, please. Okay? This is potency. No, it's not. It's the... It's the uh, dissipation of potency. Like setting off a stick of dynamite. Wow, that's potency. No, it is the release, the demise of potency. Because potency is this. I don't see anything. You're right. What's there? There's nothing there. You know, oh, there's nothing there. No, no, no. No. <laughs> that's what you don't understand. See all the potency? This is what human beings see. Let me give you a really, 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 really simple analogy. The hands are unreal. You remove the hands, you remove line, circle, sphere. You remove the hands. See, this is what people think is potency. If you actually enlarge this clock in a really, really big, I mean really big. Everybody has a big clock's made just for the hell of it. The outside of this hand is sweeping like so goddamn fast. Like, wow. Down here, it's hardly moving at all. Well, it's the exact same hand. How could it be moving really fast here? Force in motion. You see, this hand is moving at the same speed. The entire hand is moving at the same speed. Yeah, but if you go out here, the hand is moving 100 miles an hour, but down here, it's not moving at all. Yeah. Where is the potential at? Well, this is potential because I see a lot of force in motion out here. It's going 100 miles an hour. No. This is the shit that isn't moving at all right back here, the fucking battery. It's not moving, you can't see anything. This would be counter space. This is pure potential. The release of that potential is force in motion. The inverse of space is counter space, i.e. increasing potential. You see, humanity has their shit backwards, upside down, and stupid. Mother Nature is really, really simple. Math does not define science. Math is what humanity does to codify and calculate. Math is neither science nor nature. Let me repeat that. Shit! Math is neither science nor is it nature. It's a human contrivance. Mother Nature doesn't have a calculator. You need to get a little bit closer to understanding the way the universe really works. It is very simple. The only problem is that you've been looking at it with blinders on through the uh, prism of stupidity while standing on your head buried neck deep in cow shit. It's not that cosmic mechanics are hard. It's that you fail to open up your goddamn eyes. That is the really dumbed down version. <laughs> I don't know if I could dumb it down any simpler than that. That's as dumbed down as it gets. I hope that wasn't too complex because that's as dumbed down as it gets. This cloth is un, unsticking itself from the bottom of the table. That's what I'm actually doing underneath the table here. 
because this is a background cloth actually taped it. If you like this video, you can drop a buck or two, or you can tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Yeah, right there, girlfriend. Bye. Why don't you think about this shit before you go to bed? Then you might understand how the universe works. Point, line, circle, sphere. There we go. Now you pull the goddamn hands off the clock, what do you got? Now imagine a clock with no hands on it. Can you imagine it? Does that mean that time stops? Or only the definition of what we think time is? Wait.